Hi, welcome again to Meet Our Ex Success Stories. I'm Brooke, a coach here. And today I'm very happy to introduce Melanie, who I'll be speaking with about her carnivore adventure here. Hi, Hi. Melanie, how are you? Hi, Brooke, I'm doing really well. Thank you. Thank you again for taking the time to share with us about what it's been like for you with the carnivore <laughs> diet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What brought you to this diet? Hmm. Well, I was suffering from an autoimmune disorder called Raynaud's. And I, up to that point, I had many other problems, but it was seeking a way to lower inflammation. And I did that through and to improve my circulation as well. And I did that by uh, eliminating a lot of plants following Dr. Stephen Gundry's The Plant Paradox program. And I really saw a lot of benefit to removing these plants. And I had in the past taken nightshades out of my life and saw the benefits in that, but I never really did it on a systematic way. And so after a few months of that, I heard a podcast with a carnivore doctor, Dr. Saladino, and I thought, oh, that's just really nuts. That's just crazy. But I started thinking about it and thought, you know, if taking some plants out of my diet is beneficial, what if I take out most of the plants of my diet? And I did. On my birthday in November 2019, I decided that I would be mostly animal based. And of course, my family was just, okay, what, what now? This crazy fad, because in the past, I had been a vegetarian, I had been a vegan, I had tried every diet under the sun to just try to gain some control over my health. And happily, I've really done well with being mostly animal based being mostly carnivore. And um, I'm still eating this way a year and a half or so later. I'll be celebrating two years, my carnivorsary in November of this year, 2021. Can I ask you, what were you eating before? I mean, it sounds like you've gone through a nice long journey with trying yes. to find the option. Well, you know, I was born in the 60s and my mother, you know, served us the standard American diet and I loved meat. I loved meat. It was the thing I craved. I hated vegetables. And in fact, I was forced to eat them. I would just chew them up and put them in my napkin and go to the bathroom and throw it away. I was just don't want any of that. The only vegetables I really liked were those that were doused in butter, like corn on the cob or artichoke hearts or not artichoke hearts, you know, the leaves. Like, wow, you can scoop butter into your mouth using these leaves. And that was just fantastic. But then I um, started to eat more things like, you know, I was really getting into the pastas and the breads. And when I uh, turned 16, I got my first white hair. I started having really bad debilitating back pain. I started seeing a chiropractor at the age of 20 because I was just in such a, I was so messed up <laughs> and I had I was just addicted to sugar and I would just have tons and tons of sugar. And it was just really terrible. My mother was diagnosed as a celiac in college while I was in college. And so to help her kind of with that, I would, you know, not eat the bread and pasta. And I noticed how good I felt. And I was like, that just sort of like started ringing some bells for me that maybe it is what I'm eating that is causing my problems. And so I was mostly a vegetarian. Eventually, I started to like vegetables a lot more. And in my mid 40s, I started having symptoms that were really scary, cognitive problems, not even able to remember people I had met recently, walking like a drunk person, having vertigo, uh, tingling and numbness in my fingers. So I went to see a neurologist and he thought I had MS and did a scan of my brain, said, oh, your brain looks great. And let's do blood work. The blood work showed a borderline deficiency of B12. And it took a year of getting B12 shots in my hip to get me back to normal. And then after that, I was like, okay, I just need to eat you know, B12 the rest of my life. And I just said, well, maybe being a vegan would be helpful. How, how 
How did you get from needing B12 to being a vegan? I'm just curious. Because I was taking B12 pills. I was like, I don't need meat. Okay. I, oh, you I can just take the pill. I can just take the pill and I can be a vegan. And I hated being a vegan. The vegan veganism was not for me. I tried as best as I could to follow it, but it was just, okay, no. And then I started having symptoms of Raynaud's, which is um, my fingers would get numb and turn white in cold weather. And this was really difficult for me because I would ride my bike to work and I had fingerless gloves and I'd ride to work in like 60 degree weather and my fingers would be numb. And my doctor said, okay, I know what this is. It's Raynaud's. There's no cure for it. We can, once it's spread to your other fingers, we can put you on medication, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, mm -mm, I don't want that. And so I decided to start looking into ways to improve my circulation, really. And I started doing Buteco breathing, which is, you know, nasal breathing. And I still do that. I sleep with mouth tape over my mouth. And that really helped a lot. I got my veins done, my legs. And it wasn't until I had wait, wait, a... Wait, wait, wait. What did you mean? You got your veins done? Oh, I got my veins ablated. Yeah, I'm just sort of, um, you know, I had to get vein surgery, like laser surgery on my veins to help open them up. And the vein surgeon was like, you had two deep vein thrombosis or whatever, DVTs. And I was like, really? I didn't know that. It must have been when I was uh, pregnant with our son. And I was like, 250 pounds and on bed rest. And I was thinking, well, it's probably what, what it was. And so I had um, a little bit of a, a scare uh, at work. I was feeling really faint and my chest was kind of constricted. Went to the heart hospital and they said, you haven't had a heart attack, but we want to look at you a little bit more closely. They gave me a calcium scan and I have a little moderate blockage. I've never had any problem with my cholesterol. You know, being mostly a vegetarian, my cholesterol was always really, you know, spot on. And I was like, okay, I got to do something about this. I've got to do this naturally. I don't want drugs. They put me on a statin. Six weeks on a statin, I was having suicidal ideation. They immediately took it off. And my doctor said, allergic to statin, so I'll never have another statin. Oh, can I ask you? So, <laughs> so your doctor responded to your... Um, oh, the, the, the cardiologist, the cardiologist said, um, uh, to go off of it. My medical doctor, um, a different person said, mm, I'm not going to have you on statins ever again. No statins for you. So, so you, you explained how it was, how you were feeling psychologically. Yes, and, yes. They and they said, them. statins aren't, aren't really meant for everybody. And I, okay. I knew that there was a, a, you know, a possibility that I might have side effects. I never, never crossed my mind that I would want to, you know, hurt myself. Well, that close relationship you had with your medical provider was helpful then. Yeah, she was really smart. Um, she, she is retiring. So I have to look for a new doctor. But um, in March, she did my, my lipid panel. And I got all my blood results back. And she said, I can't understand this. Your cholesterol is way high, but you know, your thyroid's great. Everything else is great. Everything, you look perfectly healthy. Your, your um, CRP is negligible, it's 0.3. You know, I don't understand this. And I said, well, it's my diet. <laughs> And I don't, I don't, you know, you really have to get up with the, you know, the, the most recent research, but she's retired now. So she's not going to do that. <laughs> but anyway, I feel so much better on carnivore. I have so much more energy. I'm no longer anemic. I was anemic all my life. I have great iron levels. I have great protein levels. I have great libido. I have just wonderful energy and I love being in the sun. I love exercising. I'm always active. I never have, you know, I've never had dips in my energy. Whereas before when I was a vegetarian, I'd be like eating every three hours. And if I didn't eat, I would be cranky and hangry and I would have coffee at three o'clock to give me a boost. And I don't need that anymore. When you were a vegetarian, um, you were a vegetarian or vegan? I was a vegetarian mostly, a vegan maybe so for like a few months. Yeah. Dairy and eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's good. Yeah. Um, and I was eating some meat. Um, when I met my my second husband, my first husband and I, we were mostly pretty strict vegetarians. But when I met my second husband, I started eating more meat. So I was more like 80% vegetarian. And especially during my periods, I, I would definitely need a burger. You know, I was just like, I'm just, I don't care. I need it. Yeah, it's, it's almost sustainable as long as, as long as you can be including 
uh, eggs. Yeah. She's yeah. an occasional meat. And I mean, it's interesting that you call it vegetarian. Um, yeah, I call it vegetarian because it was mostly, I was mostly a plant-based person. And yeah. I, I was studying Buddhism. I was, you know, doing it out of compassion yeah. for all living sentient beings. And it, it kind of made me feel hypocritical to eat meat. But, you know, the way I look at it is my body craves it just the same way a mama bear craves going to the river and catching salmon to, to feed herself near her cubs. You know, it's, it's the food I need. Life is full of contradictions for the human animal. Mm. Um, so you said you, you were 250 pounds. You're certainly not 250 pounds now. Right. I gained um, a lot of weight when I met my, first, my second husband um, because uh, he was on an expense account and we just ate out a lot. <laughs> I just was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> and then um, just didn't lose the weight. When I got pregnant, I gained about 50 pounds and I, I lost it pretty quickly. I've been, I've been a size 22 and a size two. I've been all around, but I, for the past year, I've been 135, which is really, really marvelous for me. I, I weighed more than that when I was in high school. Good for you. Mm -hmm. um, so when you, right before, when you were um, listening to Dr. Gundry, when you read his book, mm -hmm. what you were sort of eating a, you had been vegetarian, so you, you probably were eating a mixed diet, but sort of looking being aware yeah i was i was eating lots of different things um, a lot of fried food um i loved frying food and stir fries and things like that um i took a lot of that out I took a lot of the bad oils out of my diet i took nightshades out i loved eggplant parmesan and tomato sauce and all that and pizza and you know i just just took that stuff out and lost a lot of weight and I didn't need to lose too much weight. I need, I lost about 25 pounds, but the energy levels and my Reynolds went into remission. Nice. You know? And your back pain was maybe. Oh my, I have no back pain. Very good. Um, and so when the Reynolds went into uh, a mission mm -hmm. or remission, excuse mm -hmm. me. So you, you must've uh, discussed that with your physician. What did they think? Um, I did not discuss that with my physician. Mm -hmm. I did not. It was something I remember I was going to talk to her about it and I just, it just didn't come up. She didn't bring up my notes and I didn't think of it you know, at the time. She was more concerned about my cholesterol. <laughs> Are you on medication for Reynolds? Is there a medication? No, no, they, there is, but she, she didn't want to put me on any medication until it spread to my other digits. <laughs> <laughs> So what happened was it was mostly in my, my index finger, my middle finger and my thumb. And now if I ever get it, if, if it does happen, like it's really cold outside and I'm riding my bike, I might get a tip, this, a tip of this finger might go numb, but that's it. I mean, it's, it's getting so much better. It's, I consider it in remission. Is that connected to frostbite in some way it can be it can be it can i think in my case it might be because of all the vibration from riding my bike i was riding my bike a lot of some and, nerve damage from yeah that. exactly and it could also be an autoimmune uh, i consider it an autoimmune disease and i think probably because of my leaky gut too i think taking out a lot of plants really healed my gut yeah and so so let me just ask so you went so you dropped start dropping plants and went um and eating more meat. What were you doing then? Did you just sort of eat only beef for a while or what, well, did, you, what I, did you at first bring it down to? I just liked my favorites. You know, I just increased my favorites. I really love beef. My Instagram can't handle is um, eat um, beef, eat replete. So it's, you know, I love beef. I love ribeyes. I love, you know, grass fed burger meat. Um, I love eggs. And I ate a lot of eggs. I ate too many eggs. Last year I had a rash and I intuited it was the eggs. So I took eggs out of my diet and it went away. And then about a month later, I ate an egg and didn't have any kind of reaction. So I've added them back to my diet. Where, where do you get your eggs? Were you cognizant of what, where, where you're getting your eggs? Um, I think we were getting pastured eggs, like Whole Foods, you know, places like that. Yeah. Um, 
uh, it's not, you know, I've had lots of different eggs and I think we get, now we get a lot of our eggs from Costco because, because the, the cost is really it's mm -hmm. a lot cheaper. We eat a lot good, of eggs. It looks like they have a good pastured egg. Good pasture. Yeah. They, we eat a lot of eggs. <laughs> yeah, so, and I have then, chickens here myself, so yeah. I have. Yeah, that's nice. I would love to have chickens. And so I, and I was eating, you know, I was eating pork and, and chicken and, and bacon and, and sausage and all that kind of stuff. And I eat a lot less of that now. I mostly just want to eat beef now and um, some chicken, um, you know, I, whatever I, I'm drawn to. So I'm you're eating all the animal foods and now you've gone mostly to ruminant meat. Mostly, yeah. I, I'm very, I'm very open to lots of different types of meat. Um, we recently spent almost a month in Mexico, and that's very hard for somebody who's not trying to eat a lot of nightshades because of all the tomatoes and peppers. So I uh, tried to stick with mostly meat dishes um, without any kind of salsas and things. They had this really wonderful Yucatan um, pork called pork pock chuck, and it's thin pork just just on the grill, and I love that. And they had sausages and you know just grilled chicken and things like that. Just lo really lovely, lots of lovely meat. And I really enjoyed that. And you know we had yak one time in Colorado. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just happy to eat whatever. I'm very yeah. Yak very is open. another ruminant it's like a water bottle. yeah yeah definitely and yeah. i've had you know rattlesnake and i've eaten bugs and i've eaten you know, all sorts of interesting things we had a lot of raw fish in mexico i love that nice yeah so yeah warm water fish maybe depending on where you it was really good and so, shrimp oh well, mm -hmm, yeah so now uh sounds like you're still eating a variety of meat but mostly ruminant sounds like yeah. mm -hmm. and, and fish um happy to eat fish I'm happy and, to eat salmon and just you know whatever i i'm sort of in the mood for do you eat liver yes i love liver i eat heart and liver there's a restaurant in, in our neighborhood that sells awful and they'll have like an awful special and i remember one time they had um a, a skewer of of chicken hearts <laughs> grilled yeah. chicken hearts. I was like oh that was so good so I, I just love those kinds of things too yeah I love all those organ meats too and chicken legs uh, or chicken feet you know we get pastured chicken feet from the same butcher and um, that's when I make my bone broth out of mostly mostly chicken so you eat um, nose to tail and you eat a lot of ruminants and you mm -hmm. eat um, uh, you include bone broth so you eat some mm -hmm. gelatinous things oh yeah do you have some, do you take supplements at all? My doctor wanted me to add more uh, D3. Mm -hmm. And because um, I was trying to get as much sun as I could, but it was still kind of low mm -hmm. and uh, spent a lot of time in the sun in Mexico, but I'll still pop a little bit of, of D3 just to make, cause it's such an important vitamin. Um, and, you know, I still have a big jar of, um, B12. <laughs> I'm not sure I really, really need that. My B12 has gone up so well naturally. So do you eat dairy food? I do mm -hmm. a little bit of dairy. I like I'm eating a lot less than I used to. And I find that really helpful. And magnesium at all? Uh, I was taking some magnesium. I didn't notice it helping me because one of my problems I did have um, becoming transitioning to carnivore was constipation. And I didn't go for like nine days when I first started. And I was like, I don't know if I can stick this out. And then I started adding things like um, I was adding, I was eating prunes <laughs> and a, a little bit more fruit and things like that. And that seemed to really help me. And over the months, it was kind of on and off. But now I have the best digestion I've ever had. Oh, good. Very mm -hmm. good. Do you still include a little bit of fruit? I do. I'll have some avocado or some prunes or dates or... Um, like I'll buy a grapefruit and that'll last me a week. You know, I have a little bit of grapefruit now and then. How about you last know? you a week? Yeah, a, grape, a grapefruit will last. Yeah, yeah. They, I don't, I don't eat a lot when I do. It's just like enough for a taste. Like a condiment. Yeah. Right. Right. Nice. Well, it sounds like things are going well for you. Um, yeah, I would say and, so. Yeah, that sounds good. And and is your spouse also? Eating this way? No, my husband actually started eating more 
like me when I was a vegetarian after he had a really bad kind of um, health scare. And the doctor was basically like, you have to eat like your wife. <laughs> and so he did that and lost a lot of weight. And so he's much more interested in vegetables. But now since I'm eating more meat, he's been eating more steak and eggs. And so he has been adding more, more meat to his diet. Which okay, is really you're the trailblazer of the family. Yeah, I guess. But I don't think he's ever going to be a carnivore fully. <laughs> well, he's eating animal food with you. So Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. He's, he's health conscious. He's more health conscious when, than when I met him, that's for sure. Very nice. It sounds like things are working really well for you. Yeah, I'd say so. Do you have any, any piece of advice for someone who's... Just yeah, like, trust, trust your intuition. Advice. Trust your intuition, um, definitely. One of the things I remember when I was um, eating vegetarian and adding more meat to my diet was when I, I was working at a like a holistic, holistic um, a workshop kind of environment. And they had a vegetarian buffet with, they'd have a couple of, of animal products. And at one time they had this um, serving of chicken and this woman and, and her family were, were talking about it and saying, oh yes, our son is a vegan and blah, blah, blah. And the son went by the chicken and said, mom, I need that. I need that. A little boy. He was, he was like boy. five, you know, it's like, and she's, they just laughed. He was like, ha ha ha. Do you just think you need it? <laughs> oh, they didn't put it on his plate. No, no, but he was like, I need that. And I know exactly how he feels. <laughs> Too bad they didn't hear him. I mean, yeah. he's probably hearing himself now by now. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been really nice talking to you about this, Melanie. It sounds like you, you're you still following. You're like that little five-year-old boy and you kind of know what you need. Oh, yeah. And as a child, I knew that plants weren't good for me because yeah. there is that innate fear of plants that kids have. So they don't go wandering off eating poisonous plants. Yeah. Those plants are poisonous, but like the ones that are really going to kill you on the spot. And that's, you know, I wish that I was a little bit more adamant. My parents were a little more, I don't know, <laughs> well, they were less, they were less interested in feeding us on the cheap, let's say that. <laughs> oh, and they probably th thought they were doing the right thing. I'm of sure. course. You yes. know, the parent, you know, the things that we've, the mistakes we've made, God bless us all. <laughs> Thank you again, Melanie. Oh, you're very welcome. It was so nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too. Carney on. <laughs> Thank you.